Hi and welcome to the video. My name's Gareth and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a picture black and white in Photopea the right way. So let's get straight into it. So as you can see, I've got this really nice shot here of a woman standing in a lavender field and I think this would make a really good black and white shot. So what I'm going to do first is show you what not to do, which is what a lot of people would do to make a black and white, which is actually they'd go to hue saturation because it's what a lot of people know and they would just desaturate the image and call it a day. And that's fine. I mean, that does give you a black and white image, of course, but it doesn't give you any control. It's that's how it looks and that's it. So I'm going to show you the best way to do this. So we'll remove that hue saturation layer. I'm going to go down and we are going to choose the black and white filter, which sounds obvious, but quite a lot of people don't use this because once they click on it, they're greeted with all these different sliders, which kind of throws them off because they don't really understand how it works. So I'm going to just quickly go through this with you now. So when you choose the black and white filter, you, you can see you'll get all these sliders with colored names next to them, red, yellow, green, etc. Now, what these are is it's still seeing the colors behind the scenes, even though it's presenting the image in black and white. And these sliders will now affect the brightness level of those colored areas. So, for example, if I go to the red slider, now I know in this kind of shot, there's a lot of red in a skin and a lot of red in a hair. So if I drag the red slider to the left and the right now, Obviously, it's not making the image colourful because it's in black and white, but it's affecting the relative brightness of the areas that Photo P sees as being red. So if I drag it to the left, it's making the skin and overall face darker and a hair darker. If I drag it to the right, you can see it's brightening up all the areas of red. And again, it worked with yellow. There'd be a lot of yellow in a hat because it's like a straw hat. So you'll see that going brighter and darker. And it goes on like that. Cyan will be in the sky. There'd be some cyan in the sky. So again, lightening and darkening. And what this allows you to do is you can now balance the image out. So for example, we can drag the magenta slider to the left, which is going to affect a lot of the lavender. So we're darkening all the lavender. So we'll darken the lavender. And we might make her skin and hair a bit brighter. And all of a sudden, you've created a lot more separation between the subject and the background. And this is all without any kind of masking or selections. And this is why I would recommend using the black and white filter instead of just desaturating because you get all this level of control over the image. So blue, if we drag blue, in this case, you can see there's a lot of blue in the lavender as well and some in the sky. So it's, it's almost creating an overall brightening effect to the image or darkening around the subject. And you can, you can really push it and separate the subject really beautifully with this. One thing I will say about this, and this is quite important, is if you don't have a very good quality image to start with, you can't push some of these sliders too far because the image will start to break up in quality. So if you look in the bottom left corner of this lavender, if I push this too far, you'll see you'll start to get all these little artifacts and lines. So that's just something to be mindful of when you're really cranking these sliders is if you push them too far, if it's like a compressed JPEG that you started with, it will bring out, tend to bring out some of the artifact in the image. But as long as you don't go too crazy with it, you should get a great result um, every time. So one last trick I want to show you with this actually, and I'm just going to create a new black and white adjustment layer to show you. is if you turn the blending mode of that black and white adjustment layer to luminosity mode, which is right at the bottom, what that does is it will bring the image back to color. So you've got the black and white adjustment mode on, change the blending mode to luminosity, and the result is the image will be in color again. However, what you can now do is play around with those sliders again, and it will work the same way, but with the image still in color. So as you can see, if I we're lightening and darkening the magenta again by dragging the slider. The red slider will make her skin lighter and darker and her hair, but the image is now in color still. So we can use these really handy um, adjustment sliders for the brightness level of all the colors with the image still in color, which is really great. Um, all by changing the blending mode to luminosity. So that's just an extra little hint. You can use this so it doesn't have to be on black and white images. You can use the black and white filter to adjust color images without any masking or any selection. So it makes it super fast and convenient to make these kind of adjustments. And as you can see, if you make an adjustment here in color, 
like I was saying earlier in the bottom left, we've got a few of these artifacts. It's bringing out some strange colors, but I'll show you how to fix that quickly. So already that image has got a lot more impact. And to fix those, all I'm going to do is I'll create a blank layer in between the two. I'll just take a brush, make a nice soft brush, change the blank layer to color blending mode. And then I'll just simply um, choose the color of the lavender and I'll just paint over maybe with a lower opacity. And just sort of paint over these areas to make the color a bit more uniform. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you.